you, I mean, you were always a computer whiz at school and you seem to, you were quite clever at sort of manipulating the, the scheduling software to your own advantage, weren't you? Yeah, computers came along uh, when I was 13 and they kind of intimidated the teachers. So I and a few others uh, were viewed as the computer experts and they were nice enough to let us do the uh, scheduling of the different classes so I could decide you know, which girls were in my class. And, uh, <laughs> so, cool. so I had lots of great girls in my class. I didn't talk to them much, but they were there. <laughs> uh, but, but, I mean, you, you've started a high point there. From then on, Bill, it's all downhill. Because uh, if you're 13 years old and you're manipulating the, 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 the girls in your class, that's like a dream. <laughs> no, I, it was very, it's great privilege. Hey, learning science, you'll be amazed at the opportunity <laughs> the to come your way. The power. <laughs> um, now, we know in hindsight, that because you dropped out of Harvard, and in hindsight, it was to obviously start Microsoft. But at the time, for your parents, they wouldn't have known the success that that was going to go on to become. How did they feel about their son doing that? Well, they were very generous. They, um, you know, paid for my tuition. At the time, officially, I went on leave. And so, you know, if the company hadn't gone well, uh, Harvard's very generous about letting people come back. So it really wasn't kind of a a permanent thing. So you never expect, so you were thinking at some point I'll end up going back and finishing uh, my I wasn't, but Your you parents know, were if, hoping. if I'd been unrealistic and the, the business hadn't worked out, it, I could have. And I love school. I mean, uh, I loved it when I was there and even now I read more textbooks and so it's kind of ironic that I'm a dropout because I, <laughs> I read more. I like to learn as, uh, as much as anyone yeah. I know. Yeah. Um, your early days, you described yourself as, as a nightmare boss. Those are your words, not mine. Um, was your worth, work ethic just very different to everybody else's? I was fanatical uh, in my 20s. Uh, helping Microsoft lead the way in software was the only thing that I really focused on. So, you know, I worked weekends. I didn't believe in vacation. And so I I really pushed people to work hard mm. uh, did you, did you... and I was still learning how to manage people, particularly the different skill sets, the sales people, the accounting people. Uh, and so, you know, I, 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 I fortunately, I, I think I'm a little bit better now. <laughs> uh, and your, your wife was, was there. She worked for you. She was in the Eventually, that's right. Uh, uh, she came uh, after about 10 years. Uh, that wasn't the system that you manipulated to make her come into the company. That, no, that no, happened, no. That happened <laughs> organically. She, she was just there. Uh, <laughs> and uh, At the point where you met and you suddenly sort of took a shine and, and clearly there was an attraction, had you managed to get on top of your being a sort of a, a nightmare boss? Were you sort of in, in, in control? Because essentially you were still the boss, you were her boss. Yeah, uh, well, not directly. Uh, the company was big enough that there were a few people in between myself and her and you know we started off uh, pretty casually but you know then kind of surprised each other by uh, falling in love and uh, oh. after we got married she uh, retired from Microsoft but uh, she always understood what we were what we were doing she oh. she had a great career Do you know when you coming in today we put it out there and asked people what would they like to ask um, you <clears throat> and the same questions kept coming up time and time again and if it's all right I'm gonna put a few of those to you now the first question was what's the most extravagant thing you've ever bought well certainly the greatest extravagance is that uh, there you go, when I, I travel uh, I often go by use a private plane and that is very extravagant. But you didn't yeah. start doing that because up until no, I waited. I, I always were... thought that was kind of a decadent thing. But uh, then when I started traveling to Africa and Asia a lot, uh, I, I gave in on that. Do you, do you enjoy it? Do you enjoy that now? Can yes. You, you enjoy that? Do no, it's a, it's a luxury. Um, it's my one true extravagance. Yeah. Okay. okay. Next one. Go on. Uh, how much money do you have in your wallet, Bill? I, I don't carry a wallet around a lot. Uh, so are you a bit like the Queen? The Queen doesn't carry <laughs> money. No, what's in that purse? Uh, <laughs> no, that's no not money. money, not money. Oh, goodness, I wonder. Is that uh, so, so you have people with you that, that have to take care of that sort of thing now? Uh, well, it, when I'm going out, uh, when I'm not doing a business trip, then I, I'll carry a wallet around that'll have a few hundred dollars and some credit cards in it. Yeah. Uh, pretty normal. Okay, uh, next question. Do you ever wear the same thing twice? 
Not without it getting washed, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's where Fair we differ enough. again, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I recycle everything all the time. Uh, here's one. Now, this was a very popular question. Everybody wants to know, how many bathrooms do you have in your house, Bill? Uh, too many. Too many, uh, yeah. <laughs> and finally, what do you want your family to buy you for Christmas? Um, well, usually they'll pick books or movies uh, that they've seen and like, uh, or they'll offer to do some sort of a trip together. Uh, people are pretty creative. I, I like puzzles, uh, so they'll often get those. So you're not, do you, not, you don't think you're that difficult to buy for? Oh, well, yes. We, we no, have... I think I am. Because uh, <laughs> I have so many, you know, the things I want. Yeah, cool. But there's always new books, movies, puzzles, some, something that's a little personal. Well, this isn't a book, a movie, or a puzzle. Uh -oh. But it is, we think it's a gift that money can't buy, and that's our little present for you. you what is it? Did I open it? Yeah, I'm yeah. excited right. by this. Money can't buy this. I'm slightly worried what you've done there, Holly. <laughs> oh, no, this is just, this is, then you're going to treasure this forever, I tell you, if you can get into it. Tim. Look yeah, at that. All right. Many want that. Good it deal. is a this morning <laughs> mug. You can take that and enjoy that. That is it's hot. A gift. Money cannot buy that. <laughs> all right. I'm not sure anyone would want to, but uh, thank you so much for coming in. Yes. Yeah. It's been a treat to meet you. For more of the same, just click here. And you've never had an Instagram account before or anything uh, like that? No, I had never had an Instagram account. But you learned very quickly. I had to learn everything <laughs> because, you know, it was, it was completely new to me. So I learned something new every day. Yeah.